It's been a while since I used to say these words, so I'm going to say it anyway. It's Tuesday Wrestling, and you know what that means. So, we once again got NWA Power with the final first round matches in the Champions Series. We even got a 90 plus minute event by All Elite Wrestling for their dark shows. And also we got NXT where we're going to see what really happened. Will NXT survive their love? We may never know. But also going to add in another wrestling show that took place this past June. This one is once again by ICW No Holds Bars. It's the Pit Fighter X8. So let's get ready for another episode of the Lita Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jared here. So let's begin with the National Wrestling Alliance, the NWA for the Power episode with continuation with the Champion Series. So right now we're still in the first rounds, but we also finished the first rounds. The first match we have is Kenzie Page representing Camille and Austin Idol taking on Lady Frost representing Aaron Stevens and Terrell, uh, uh, Taryn Terrell. This match was pretty good, but this match most likely was in the hands of Lady Frost. She seems like she had everything under control, but however, she screwed up. Now, basically... You would have assumed, as if you're a fan, Lady Frost had this in the back, but no. She likes to play the cocky type. Basically, she had everything under control, but somehow, Kenzie Page turned it around and won the match, which is disappointing for their team. So, however, this shows now that this is becoming more serious than we have expected. The next match we have is Crimson taking on the Mystery Man. Crimson is representing... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Melina and Nick Aldis and Mystery Man representing the Pope and Sky, uh, uh, Velvet Sky. This match was unbelievable because a lot of the thing we knew about Crimson, we know how good he is. He's one half of the workings. But however, this new guy, Mystery Man, we don't know much about him. We don't know who he is. What's his wrestling style that he trained? But it's it felt pretty good to know because it felt like. In a way, we may never know who he is. But what I did like about this is it was a good match, but it, fortunately, it ended in a time limit draw. So that means they each will get certain points, but I doubt this is what they wanted. But it was a good match, and I have to say I give it a thumbs up on that. Next match is a four-way of the alternates. Basically, these are four wrestlers are the alternates of each team. And basically, they're all faced off. We have Sauber Nauro versus Jordan Clearwater versus Jeremiah Pluckett and versus Colby Carino. Now, Carino was the one guy who's been mostly trying to prove that he was the one who earned a shot. He felt like he's being overlooked and all this and that. However, he sort of had in a temporary alliance with Jeremiah Pluckett, but it didn't last long. It was Jeremiah Pluckett that won. So he could get the advantage for his team. I think he's part of all, all this and Melina. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But we'll see how that goes. Now this match is the battle, of, the battle of the Bohemians. We have Kratos representing Camille and Austin Idol. Taking on Tyrus representing... Uh, Aaron and Taryn. Now, this is one match where Austin Idol, he knows what's at stake here. He knows he has to represent Kratos. 
and he has Tyrus as a business associate outside of it. But this time he's willing to say this was a good match. Now, to me, I would have assumed that Kratos would have won. But fortunately, no. It was Tyrus who won the match. It shows how powerfully strong he can be. And I think this is one of those things where we're seeing, okay, Tyrus is a different type of individual. Away from what he was back when he was with WWE and away from Impact Wrestling. And I think that's a good thing. So Tyrus won for his team and it was a really good match. Next up, we have Slice Boogie taking on Jack Stain. This man, this match was also a classic due to the fact that uh, Slice Boogie had his issues with Jack Stain in the past. But however, it showed that Jack Stain still had it. He's representing Pope and Velvet Sky as for Slice Boogie, Melina, and Nick Aldis. It was a pretty good darn match. I have to say it was one of the most interesting ones. So Jack Stain won when he pulled up a lariat on him and pff, he was out. One, two, three, it was over. However, because of these two matches, in the brackets, it's already revealed. Bracket A, we got, of course, Aaron and, and Taryn are out. They did not have the sufficient points. And the other team is Aldis and Molina. So basically... Only uh, in the finals, we're going to receive, of course, Camille and Austin Idol taking on Pope and Velvet Sky. So this is going to be good to watch. So right now, this concludes the first round matches in the Champion Series. We'll see what's going to happen next week on NWA Power. But I think that's it for now with this. Let's move on with AEW Dark. Okay, so we got AEW Dark, which right now they reached their 100th episode, which I failed to mention. My bad. But it was a really good match. Basically, 90 plus minutes, no problem. But let's start with the first opening match. We have the wingmen consistent of Ryan Mennett, JD Drake, and Cesar Bononi being accompanied by Peter Avalon taking on Chuck Taylor, Wheeler Yuta, Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy and, of course, being accompanied by the resident alien, Chris Satlander. The match was good. I enjoyed many moments. There was plenty of misfires coming from Minute. But I think the best moment was when Wheeler Yuta pulled off an amazing pinfall on J.D. Drake, which was a very, very impressive win. And I have to say... AEW sign Wheeler Yuta and I have to say he is one of the guys they should put in the best friends the next match we have um, we got Jack Evans along with the members of the Hardy family office taking on Pac being accompanied by Lucha Bros uh, turns out that Jack Evans and Pac known each other for many years dating back all the way from their time in Dragon Gate so this is more like a feud and I have to say this one showed that Pac was being serious he's not messing around and of course he did not pull off the broken arrow like we would have imagined he would but instead he put Jack Evans in a brutalizer forcing him to tap out or just say I quit but however it did not end right there once again Andrade shows up stirring the pot now the reason he's doing this is because he believes that Penta and his brother Phoenix are better off with, with him than Pac. So, <coughs> this is going to be an interesting story, but we'll see what happens then. And of course, we had a video package coming in from Red Velvet, who is now has her sight for the AEW Women's title. She is now top number five in the ranking, which is pretty good. Now, I don't recall, I, I try to remember if she ever was in the top five. But if she did, then it would make sense. Now, the next match, we have Tay Conti taking on Kenzie Page, who we I just mentioned on the NWA Power event. Uh, it was a pretty good match. As you know, uh, Tay Conti is one of my favorite wrestlers to watch because of her ability. And, sorry about that. My camera just went 
a different board, but it's fine. Don't worry. So anyway, it was a pretty good match, and of course, an impressive win by Tay Conti. And but it does not end right there. Apparently, we just saw a little dance celebration with Tay Conti dancing with uh, Aubrey Edwards. It's a pretty good moment to watch. But yeah, the next match we have Sean Dean Fuego Del Sol taking on members of the Pinnacle, Sean Spears and Warlow. However, during this match, the commentary team were received a special visit by none other than Jake Hager of the Inner Circle. As you know, this feud between both <coughs> Warlow and Hager is now becoming more and more interesting every, more, every chance we get. But however, you can guess that it was Warlow who ended this match by putting the 1-2-3. So we'll see what happens then. Next match, we have Hikaru Shida taking on Matty Max. Um, I wasn't too much hype in this match, but it does. But of course, I'm a fan of Hikaru Shida. But I love how she does that knee strike that she does at the end to pull off the, the one, two, three. And that's what I think I like about her. But I feel they, I think for the last couple of weeks, she's been mostly been on uh, dark or elevation due to the fact that she is no longer the AEW Women's Champion, but I have to say she's adapting more of a new style of thing that she's trying to adapt to. Next match, we got Chaos Projects, Luther and Serpentico taking on the Lucha Brothers. This is also one of those matches you definitely will be good. As you know, we know there's three mass wrestlers, but however, you got the most popular team, Lucha Brothers, and of course, they actually pull off another victory with Pulling on that, that pile driver match uh, driver that they normally pull off, giving the one to three and the Lucha Brothers won. Next up, we got the Varsity Blondes along with Julie Hart teaming up with Mike and Matt Seidel, taking on Matt Hardy, The Blade, and The Acclaim. And keep in mind, The Acclaim are still on the hunt trying to destroy, make the Varsity Blondes their lives living hell. But it kind of fits like that, but however, the blade actually used the brass knuckles to wipe out Mike Sadell and winning the one, two, three. But Hardy and Blade decided to continue stomping on Mike Sadell until Christian and the Jurassic Express showed up to save the day, and they started chasing them. But however, the feud between both the Acclaim and the Varsity Blondes to continue to escalate. Keep in mind. The Varsity Blondes are currently number ranked number one for a future shot, a shot of the AEW World Tag Team Titles. As for the Acclaim, they're number two, and they feel that they should be the ones that challenge those titles. They need to be number one, and the only thing that stands in their way is the Varsity Blondes. Now, next up, we got Diamante taking on legit Layla Hirsch. Now, it was already been confirmed for the homecoming this coming Wednesday that Layla Hirsch is going to face the Bunny in a... AEW Women's World Title Eliminator. Basically, whoever wins this match will face against um, Britt Baker. So, Layla Hirsch faces Diamante. It was a pretty good match. However, Bunny shows up with the chair trying to distract the referee, give Diamante a chance to wh whack her with the chair. However, it did not go according to plan. Big Swole shows up to save the day and allowed Layla Hirsch to pick up the victory. Bunny is not a happy camper, but however, Big Soul got her little payback against Diamante for caught for winning the match the way she did, and now this time is payback. So Layla Hirsch is ready to take on the Bunny, but we'll see what happens then. Finally, we got John Moxley taking on Br uh, Brick Aldridge. Now, this was supposed to be more like an easy match, but they kind of give a little bit of the spotlight to Br uh, Brick. And I think it, it paid out pretty well. I'm not sure if they have their sights on him or they want to see how things go with him. But however, you can guess that um, Moxley won this match just like that by pulling off the paradigm shift. And it was over right there. Next match we got, of course, is Penelope before taking on Tekka, no, Rekka Takaka. Um... It was a pretty good match as well. I like, as you know, Penelope Ford is now becoming more and more develop, 
vent on her style and on her wrestling work. And I think that's pretty good. And of course, she pulled off a good victory when she pulled off that unusual submission where you go backwards. I don't know what they call it. <coughs> forcing Rekka to tap out. Now, the main event, we got Dante Martin being accompanied by his brother, Darius, taking on Eddie Kingston. But you guys can guess that Eddie Kingston won because he is one tough dude that you know you don't want to mess with. And I have to say, the matches were good. And I think I give this one a pass. And I say, the 100 of AEW Dark is a huge success. Okay, finally we got NXT with the opening match being Hit Row consistent of Ashante Diadonis and Top Dollar being accompanied by both Swerve and what's her name? BFAB taking on the members of Legado de Fantasma, Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza being accompanied by Santos Escobar. Now this feud goes way back all the way to the tournament for the interim cruiserweight title. As you know, uh, Santos fooled everybody and including that's one of them like Swerve Scott and apparently this feud would never go but however I think what I did like about the commentary what's going on is that Beth Phoenix made a valid point Santos's main objective was the North American title so basically he won um, Swerve called the shot and now he has it now however in this particular match we have a tag team this is where two teams are determined to find out who will be the team that will face MSK for the a for the NXT Tag Team titles. So basically, it's like a challenge. Now, Hit Row and Legado Fantasma are trying to fight for dominance. So basically, it's more, that's what it is. But however, this was not about winning the way it happened. Santos used the chair to disqualify his team, allowing for Hit Row to win. But however, this was this is exactly what Santos needed. He took Swerve's grill and walked out with it. It didn't matter if they were beating them up as long as they sent a mess, a clear message that they will not tolerate a team like Hit Row to take the spotlight. But however, I would like to know if, the, if Legato would actually bring a female into the ranks to deal with uh, BFAB because she will be a problem down the line. But we'll see where they're gonna go. Now, Samoa Joe, as you know, he's now active in the NXT roster. Regal is a little worried about what things can escalate between both Joe and Cross. So he brought his security team to ensure to keep him away from, from Cross, but to no avail. It's not going to happen one way or the other. Now we get to the return of the in ring, the in ring return of Rich Holland, who we all know last year he was injured. He was being accompanied by Pete Willie, uh, Pete Dunn and Orny Lorcan taking on Hickam and Gerald. Man, this mat match was like so brutal where we've seen Rich Holland take off Hickam and Gerald's jacket. I mean, if you guys know, he never takes off his jacket, but he was making a point. And of course, Rich Holland won the match. But however, Dunn put out a promo trying to prove that they are the, the true badasses in the game. So... Who will be standing up against all three of these men? Well, we don't know, but we'll see what happens there. Now, as you know, last week, Robert Stone screwed up. Now, the one thing that Frankie Monet does not like is to lose. And that's what happened. In her interview, she did not take likely with the idea that Robert Stone got in the way decided to interfere in the match almost costing her was costing her the match but however i think she might have put an ultimatum on him that if i if, here's the thing if i was frankie Monet or someone who tells her get rid of him he's gonna cause more problems because think about it Aliyah kicked his ass and she did the right thing and we all know where she's at now now we get to the match that we will hopefully we did not see. Former members of the Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong, was 
took place. This was one of those matches you definitely did not want to miss. It was so good. I like the how Bobby Fish was using his kickboxing skills to help him win it, to try to help him try to win the match. But however, it did not go according, according to plan. It was Roderick Strong. It won. But however, this match could have implications where Roderick Strong could chase the NXT Cruiserweight title and Kushida on the other hand. Later on in the event, he actually accepted Roderick Strong. So we'll see what happens when that happens. So would this match take place in TakeOver 36? I don't know. We'll see what happens then. As you know, the adventure continues with Cameron Grimes being LA Knight's butler. Despite the fact that he's been mistreated by... But he's more of the optimist kind of guy. That's what I like about Cameron Grimes. But however, he had to face... They both had to face... Um, grizzled young veterans. But at some moment... LA Knight left in the fight... The battle all by himself. I mean, Cameron Grimes did pull off... What he could, but it was not enough. However, in the post-match... Here comes Ted DiBiase... Warning him... That I understand that you're a man of the, your word... But there are times in life you have to make a decision. Because here's the thing. Cameron Grimes is always mad of his word. He will never walk out of anything. But he needs to start thinking what's best for himself. LA Knight is in it for himself. And look what he did to Ted DiBiase. He, uh, Grimes wanted to continue the legacy. But LA Knight only used them to, for his own agenda. So we'll see what happens then. Now, last week we saw the shocking betrayal by Dakota Kai. Now, you ask yourselves, what could have led this? I think this is what happened. Let's go back in time. When we all saw Dakota Kai betray Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Knox during the war games, Dakota Kai brought in Raquel Gonzalez to make sure she will ever, will become the NXT Women's Champion. However, the one thing that pissed her off is the fact that Io Shirai passed by her and Raquel Gonzalez has now became the one person that she did not expect. However, Raquel Gonzalez did make one valid point and even Dakota Kai did agree. There's no one left. But however, there was one. And Dakota Kai pointed out herself. You see, this is what the story tells. It tells us Dakota Kai is determined to become NXT Women's Champion. That was her goal from day one. And now she feels that she's being overlooked. And she will do whatever it takes to grasp it. Do we think this match is going to take place and take over 36? Will Raquel Gonzalez drop the title? Well, we don't know, but we'll see what happens from then on now we're getting closer and closer to the main event where we have the lo love her, love me or lose her mat love her lose her match grime uh, gargano and Larray believes that they know what's best for indy hartwell but the real question is does indy hartwell knows what she wants even she put on an interview but we'll get to that main event in a bit. Now we get to the final first round match in the NXT Breakout Tournament. We have Trey Baxter, one of my favorite wrestlers when he was in the Independence, taking on Joe Ga Gacy, I think? Yeah, Gacy. What an unbelievable match. I have to say Trey Baxter is one of the wrestlers I definitely need to pay attention more because outside of... WWE before he joined, he was unbelievable. He was, I'll never forget his matches he had with Ari, uh, Ari Sterling when he was, uh, what's his name? Zane something, I forgot, but it was unbelievable. And that's what I like about it. And I think he's going to be facing, don't remember who, but we got to be paying attention with the NXT breakout tournament. But he advances, and I think he, oh yeah, now I remember. He's going to face Odyssey Jones. This is going to be one interesting match to watch. Now, as you know, Zoe Starks is one half of the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions with Io Shirai. So she's trying to start a bond. So they ended up going to some Japanese restaurant. She doesn't know what Io Shirai ordered. 
And I thought it was a pretty funny. She didn't know how to handle the food, all this and that. And I thought it was very funny. I was thinking, Zoe, what you got yourself into this time? But it was good. I enjoyed the entertainment. Now, once again, Cross continues to play mind games. He believes that Joe will not put this NXT on his control. That's what they was trying to do. He believes that Regal has lost control and needs to admit that. But Joe is trying to restore order. So, however, the security team got in the way. Joe beat them up completely. So, I wouldn't blame Joe for that. He wants to hurt him badly, but we'll see what happens on NXT TakeOver 36. Now we get to the main event. Love her or lose her match. Johnny Gargano versus Dex Lumis. I have to say, this was one of those matches. Like, do we really want to see more of Index? It's so amazing. Even though Beth Phoenix was driving me nuts the way she reacted. She's treating this like a Cinderella story. And I thought it was so awesome. But however, Johnny Gargano won. So basically, it was like, oh, it's the end of Index. But however, Index followed her heart ran back to Dexu and jumped on top of him. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> I know I'm not going to hear this from Beth Phoenix. She's going to continue with this whole Cinderella thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it, her, 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 how she reacts, it, it's so unbelievable. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> I had to say, love conquers all. <laughs> But it was a good show. I have to say it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Even though the Dexter Loomis may have lost the match. But at least he won love. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I'm going to cry. Oh my god. I'm a sucker for true for romance. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Because this looks more likely that the way is falling apart. Because we did not see Austin Theory. But we'll see what happens next week. So, we'll be back for that. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this episode because, you know, I normally review many events as possible. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy me re uh, uh, finishing off with the Champions Series by the NWA. Of course, AEW Dark and, of course, NXT. And reviewing, once again, ICW. There's still more to come in upcoming up in the upcoming episode. As you know, we're jumping into AEW Dynamite's Homecoming, which is the last time we'll see them in Jacksonville. But I also decided to throw in some other wrestling events. Two of them are Yoshi Promotion. One's, one is, once again, I get to see Oz Academy. Their latest event, The Fortress, took place on the 11th. And, of course, Sendai Girls... Uh, Senjo Chronicles that also took place on the 11th, but the next one is also is called VXC Mosh Pit Killers 3rd. This took place early in July, so I'm excited to watch these shows and review them, but we'll see what happens then. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time in the same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu, so goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang!